What's going on guys? Today I have an awesome Blender tutorial for you. But before that, I want to mention that all of my plugins and presets on my online store are 25% off for Cyber Monday. I'm also going to extend that sale 48 hours, so it should expire on Wednesday. If you've been wanting to get Director 3D, which is my best selling product, you guys can grab that at a discount. Next week, there's actually going to be a free content upgrade for Director 3D for those of you that already own it. I've been making GeoNode systems, effects, more templates that I can add into that plugin. Which just to keep increasing the value for that plugin and making it useful for those of you who are starting to get into Blender or already use Blender and just wanna make your life easier. So yeah, link to the sale is down below. The 25% off is applied automatically at checkout, no code needed. Let's get into the video. So I've talked about Blender a lot and I've talked about After Effects a lot, but I rarely talk about how to take what you make in Blender and place that into your footage with After Effects. And this is a tricky thing. Compositing can be hard. It can be daunting for those of you who are new to these type of softwares. But if you do figure some things out, you can create some truly amazing stuff. I feel like 3D is becoming a larger part of video creation mainly because it's so much more accessible to everyday hobbyists and that allows you to really take your game to the next level. So this video is going to be a simple beginner's guide to help simplify this workflow. If you're still confused on anything I'm talking about here, I'm also gonna leave some more in-depth guides on certain things in the description if you wanna check that out. Let's hop into Blender and get started. All right guys, so whenever you wanna add 3D objects into your footage, the first step is always going to be to track your footage so that you can have that camera, that 3D information to composite in the objects. There's a couple of methods for this. I've talked about doing the tracking within After Effects and then bringing that tracking data back into Blender. And of course you can do it straight in Blender, which I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. So starting off with in Blender, we're going to click on this plus tab here. We're gonna go over to VFX and motion tracking. Next, we can open up the video file that we'd like to track. First, we're gonna go over and click Set Scene Frames and Prefetch. If there's something specific you wanna track, you can just control click to add it manually. But if you wanna save some time, you can let Blender do the work and just click on Detect Features. Let's click open this Detect Features tab here, and I'm just going to lower the threshold and the distance until I have a good amount of trackers in my scene. Next, what I'm gonna do is starting at the beginning of my timeline, we can click this Track Forward button. This is going to track all of the data from this position, and we wanna get as much tracking information as possible here. So at the end here, I'm going to Detect Features once more, and I'm going to track backwards this time. Once I've finished that, I'm gonna to go to the center, Detect Features again, and then I'm gonna track backwards, go back to the center, and track forwards. So we're getting as much tracking information as possible in here. Now you're gonna see in the top right, we have this solve error, and you wanna get this solve error as low as possible to get the best possible tracking results. So to improve that, what we can do is actually click on this clean tracks button. I'm gonna raise this reprojection error just to try and select the track markers that have the highest chance of having an error. Once I've done that, I'm just going to click delete and delete those tracks, and then we'll resolve. And now, as you see, our solve error went from 30 down to three. If you want, you can keep repeating those steps to try and get that number as low as possible. This will be fine for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click set as background and set up tracking scene. If you know where you want to place an object, you can also select that track point and click set as origin. If you want Blender to detect the floor plane, you can select three of these track points like this in this sort of triangle and click floor. So that should be good for our motion tracking. Let's go back over to the layout view and fix this up a bit. First of all, you wanna go up in the top right, click this little arrow here, and under viewport overlays, you wanna click on motion tracking so that you can actually see those tracking data points within our layout scene. This is very useful just for lining things up in 3D view. As you see here, just by judging off these little points, I can tell where in 3D space the van is versus where the floor is. So at this point, we have a decent track going on. Now let's talk about some of the key fundamentals to creating a successful composite starting in your 3D software. So I'm gonna switch over to the shading tab here. Our goal here is always to try and recreate the lighting of our footage as best as possible within 3D. So that is gonna start with our 3D environment. What you can do is in the world tab, click on this yellow dot next to color, and we're gonna load in an environment texture. Now you're gonna see this turn purple because right now there's no file loaded into this. So what I'm gonna do is go over to polyhaven.com. Here you can find free HDRI files, which are essentially just those 3D environment lighting files, those 360 degree images. I'm gonna look for a file that is as close to our footage environment as possible. So some sunset sort of look. If you guys want the most realistic HDRI you can, I recommend you gather an HDRI on set once you shoot your footage. You can buy a 360 camera, do this whenever you're filming. That way you have the environment 
perfectly matched for that 3D composite. But in this case, I'm using royalty free footage. So I'm just going to find as close to what my footage looks like as possible. So now we're looking a little bit better. We have some of that sunset tone in there. I'm going to switch over to the shader editor here. And if we change the roughness value of our cube material, you can see we can see that reflection a lot better. So make sure you're honing in those materials. Do you want it reflective? Do you want it not reflective? This is all up to you and what you're trying to pull off. Now, another useful tip here, let's move away from our cube. Say you want to bring in your own custom object. I'm just going to add in a Suzanne, for example, a useful little trick here. If you'd like to put your own custom object where your track cube is in the scene, you can first select your object you want to put in, then shift and select the cube and click shift S in this pie menu will pop up. Go ahead and click selection to active. Now you can see the Suzanne is tracked where our cube is. If you'd like, you can delete the cube. It's a nice nifty little trick just to copy and paste that tracking location to bring in your own custom object. So now that we can do the same with our custom object, we can create a new material for that. You can change around the reflectivity if you want that to reflect the environment a little bit better. And I'm gonna change around the rotation of this a little bit better. Now, if you'd like to change around the environment, what you can do is go back over to the shader editor. You're going to see this object tab over here in the top left. You can actually change that to world. And now you can see the HDRI file that we have loaded into the background. If you guys select that and click control T, it's going to pop up this mapping and texture coordinate nodes. If that's not working for you, make sure you go up to edit preferences and enable the node wrangler add on. It should come with all blenders by default. With the mapping node, you can change the rotation of the environment, which is very useful for trying to match the lighting. At this point, you kind of just have to eye it. Pay attention to where the light in your footage is coming from, where the sun is, where any external lights are. We'll fine tune this a little bit later. For now, I'm going to click shift A and add in a plane. And you may have already done this when you did your motion tracking, but I'm just going to use this as a little ground plane by using the tracking points to align it. Now we're going to use this plane as a shadow catcher so that we can have some realistic shadows underneath our object. To do that, we just want to click on the plane and create a, a new material for it. To use this as a shadow catcher, you want to make sure you're in cycles and not EV. And then in the object properties for the plane, we can go down to the settings section and enable this as a shadow catcher object. Also in your render settings, you want to make sure transparent is turned on here. Now we can see those shadows underneath our object. So very useful for adding in that realism. So you see here, if I click shift A and just add in a point light and move it around, we have full control over our shadows here. So now that you have that understanding of materials, lighting, getting a good track, matching the lighting of your 3D composite to your footage, let's go in here and actually drag in something that would match the scene. So I found this 3D campfire model on Sketchfab. I'm going to download it as a GLTF. Very nice because all the textures will automatically be embedded. So I can import in that GLTF. And here is our campfire. Let's do that same trick. I'm going to copy the selection to active so that our campfire is here. And then what I'm going to do is mess around with the materials for the campfire. You see, everything just looks a little bit too reflective. You want to go in here and mess around with the roughness values, with the specular values. I'm going to go in here and change around the roughness to try and make this match my scene as best as possible. Now, another side little tip here. This is actually new in Blender 4.0. If you guys go over to your render settings and scroll down to color management under view of transform previously, you could change to filmic, which would give you this sort of more log color space. Well, now you can use AGX, which is like filmic, but a bit more realistic and improved. So doing something like this can wash out those colors, which will allow you to color grade and color correct with the rest of your footage later on in post. So that's really about it. I'm going to go to my output settings, create a folder for where I want to render this, and I'm going to render out my footage. All right, so I'm going to do my final compositing within After Effects. If you'd like, you can do this all within Blender in the compositing tab at the end. It's all up to you. It's all personal preference. So first off, we're going to need our original footage. So I'll drag that in here. We can drag this into its new composition just by dragging it over this button right there. And now we're going to need our 3D render, which we tracked and set up for this shot. So to bring that in, we're going to right click in our project bin and we're going to go to import multiple files and now navigate to wherever you saved that render folder from Blender. So here's mine. We're going to click on the first frame and it should import as footage. So we'll click import and then I'm going to click done. So here's what that composition looks like. You can see that this is transparent. If I click this button here, let's go back to our first composition and we're just going to drag this PNG sequence over top. So now if I click play, we can check the track and you're seeing there's some issues here. The first thing you want to do is always check the frame rate. So if we click on this video up here, After Effects will show the frame rate as 24 FPS. Now, if we click on the image sequence, you'll see this is set to 30 FPS. So let's set this to be 24 to match. So we're going to right click. I'm going to go down to interpret footage main and we're going to assume the frame rate as 24. 
And just like that, our track is looking a lot better. So now what we can do is we can color correct. Now we did a pretty good job at this with Blender to start, but to make this even better, what we can do is go to effects and presets. Let's search for a levels effect and drop this onto our PNG sequence. With the levels effect, we can fine tune this. And if you look in the top right, it's actually going to give you the RGB info for the parts of the footage. So if you'd like to match certain colors, for example, this shadowy area over here, you see it's 48, 48, 50. We can come over to the rocks and it's pretty much around the same. But maybe you want this a bit darker. You see now we're closer to that range. You can try and match up using that. Another thing you're going to want to do is add in some blur because Blender is going to render everything pretty sharp just to account for any blur that would occur from your lens. See, this is very sharp compared to everything else. And I'm going to search for a blur and we can go with a fast box blur here and we'll just bump the blur radius up pretty low, maybe like 0.2 in this case or even 0.1. You see if we turn this on and off, I think that looks a lot better. If you want, you can even add a tiny bit of grain. Just don't go overboard with this. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Shadows might be a bit too rough here, but other than that, I think this is pretty solid. Tracking and compositing is always tricky, but it could really bring your scene to the next level and help you add in some really cool stuff or just augment and improve what you already have. So let me know if you guys would like to see a sequel to this tutorial talking about green screen, especially in a music video sense. I think there's so many cool things you could do with that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ooh.